There's no way it's Sunday again. It just can't be. <laughs> How's that happened? As always, we've gone through and picked out some games that we haven't talked about in a while for the Switch sales and also some brilliant physical sales as well. There's a couple in here. Then at the end, we've got a hidden gem and a couple that you should avoid. Congrats to the winner of our free game giveaway this week. Your name hopefully is on the screen, unless I've really balls things up. We've just refreshed the voucher again this morning for the 10% uh, off for another month. You can use code SWITCHUP on our website, switchup.gg. I think I can actually hear a few backlogs. <laughs> Weeping was a sale. Let's find out. First up then, we've got the physical for the US, but it's also on the eShop at a reduced price. It's Dying Light Platinum Edition. At the moment, this is 60% off at Walmart, taking it down to $19.99. That is an absolute bargain. It's 25% off on the US eShop, and it's not on sale at all here in the UK. Great. It's a brilliant game, a first-person parkour-based adventure set around the zombie apocalypse. It includes all of the DLCs they ever released for it. It runs flawlessly and you won't want to go out at night time because it's absolutely terrifying. If you've got a pal that's got the same game, and I guess now would be a good time to pick it up if you're a physical collector, you can team up together and play through the entire experience with each other. Any gear or items you gain will be brought back into your own world. It's really very cool. This version includes HD rumble, gyroscopic gaming, and all those fancy things things I enjoy. It has a 15.7 gigabyte download and potentially you could play this for easily 50 hours or more. The physical for the UK is Persona 5 Strikers. This is 56% off on Amazon, which is a bargain. That takes it down to £24 and 2p. That's a bit of a weird price. If you're US based, then you can get it for 50% off. And I think you can get the deluxe edition on the uh, Switch US eShop. I reviewed this one on the channel and I really enjoyed it. It had its quirks and it, you know, it's not pure Persona being a Musu game but I thought it still told a really good story. I enjoyed the combat and it had that real road trip feeling to it. You have your essentially a camper van that you go around in undertaking various requests. It's been a while since I played this. It wasn't perfect, like I say, but actually it was pretty decent. I think there were a few performance quirks if I remember rightly. I don't know if it's had a patch since then. It might be worth me actually revisiting this one for the next all patched up video, but I'd suggest it at that price. It's a good game. I'll pop a link to our full review if you want to go and check it out. And it's an 11.9 gigabyte download and about 40 to 70 hours of gameplay, so it's a good chunky one, this. One more quick shout out for 11-Bit Studios. We did a whole video on their sale. I'll pop a link to that if you want to check it out. But they've reduced their games to crazy money. Like crazy money. You can get Moonlighter at 80% off. This War of Mine at 95% off. And Children of Mortar. Essentially and allowing you to buy three of the best games on Switch for about £10, £11, something like that. And those are all on sale until the 26th of April. And you'll also know that they have been so supportive with everything that's going on in the world and the current situation in Ukraine. They've donated a huge chunk of the this war of mine and um, proceeds to that so yeah if you want to support those guys um check out these games we have reviews of all of them and they're all very very good so it's a very easy recommendation from us Up next is the brilliant Monster Sanctuary. This is 66% off, taking it down to $6.79 or your regional equivalent, and it's only 635 megabytes. It's got a Pokemon feel to it. You can create your own team. You can rename the creatures that you capture, gradually train them up. There are three versus three combat battles, and it has possibly the most addictive combat music loop I've ever heard. Earworm is not the word. We reviewed this one quite a while back now. It's been ages since I played it. But from what I remember, it has a Metroidvania influence. And it's through the collecting of those monsters that you'll actually unlock new areas and new parts of the world. Yeah, I'm sure it was Dave that reviewed this one for us, but he thoroughly enjoyed it. And at, what, just over five quid, it's a bit of a bargain. And it's on sale until April the 27th. In terms of time, you're looking at about 30 to 50 hours. So it's not the shortest. Here's a game that I actually watched my daughter play through. I think it was on iPad, might have been on iOS. And I was like, what is that? It looks amazing. And it was Legend of the Skyfish. 
Now it's 70% off, taking it down to £2.39. But it is quite a good one for kids. It's quite simplistic. She has this little hook that she can use, which enables her to like push buttons and things like that and move between different parts of these islands. But if you're after, I guess it could be a kids game or just a small one for yourself, a nice pick up and play top down adventure. There are 45 different stages. There are some nice boss fights in here. Reasonably simplistic puzzle fights, but also a really nice soundtrack from Sean Beeson. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be a fishing hook or what. But at £2.39, I mean, you can't go too far wrong, even if it is only a few hours long. Every week after we've made the video, in the comments there'll be someone saying in another video, hey, this is on sale, this is on sale, you never mention it. And one of the ones that was mentioned by a few of you is that in the US regions, Hob is currently on sale. And they said, oh, do you not like the game because you haven't mentioned it? And I'm like, I absolutely love the game. Hob's a brilliant game. And it at launch wasn't perfect, but it actually received a ton of work to fix it up. And at the moment in the US, this is 80% off, taking it down to $3.99, which is crazy. It's crazy money for the amount of quality that you're getting here. This was published by Perfect World and developed, I believe, by Runic Games, but Panic Button worked on it as well, which kind of gives you an idea of the pedigree here. It's about a 15 hour long adventure game from a top down perspective, and it starts in shocking fashion without spoiling anything. It starts in a very cool way and you gain your new ability, but it has little details in here. Things like HD Rumble have been included. As I mentioned, performance has been improved and I think it looks beautiful. It's got a download of 5.9 gigabytes and that sale goes on until April the 15th. We've got a really nice price on the Ninja Guide and Master Collection. You can get the standard game at 25% off, or you can get the Deluxe Edition at 30% off. It includes three games. It doesn't include the Shadow of the World clan battle for Ninja Gaiden 3 Razor's Edge. Whatever that is, I'm just reading that. I know some people got a little bit upset about the nerfing that took place with these as, as regards to some blood and things like that. But they're still very good games, so if you want the Ninja Gaiden trilogy on your Switch, well, get it at 25% off, taking it down to £24 or your regional equivalent, and a reasonable 3.8 gigabyte download. Another one that is US only, I'm afraid, but also one that was pointed out as being on sale and it is a game that I really rate highly and I did say that I would mention it next time it was on sale. It's Dreamscaper. It's 40% off, taking it down to $14.99. That's the lowest it's ever been. And it's a top-down roguelite, but a very, very good one. As the title suggests, you split your time between the waking world and the dream world, but they both feed into each other. The dream unlocks items and different things in the real world and vice versa, you can then equip yourself for, for the night time. I liked this, I thought it was very good, I thought it had good boss fights. The only problem I have with it, I guess, is there's quite a bit of repetition in terms of having to play through the same boss fights again and again, but on the same page, you can actually, once you've defeated a boss, you can choose to skip it the next time, but obviously you won't get the XP then. And there's quite a bit of lore as well, quite a bit of hidden narrative for you to gradually uncover. I thought it was really good, I enjoyed this. It's 4.9 gigs, about 20 to 40 hours to do everything and on sale until April the 11th. On the weekends, as you probably know, I always say, what are you playing? And then you guys tell me what you've been playing through and I usually say Elden Ring or something else. But many of you at the moment are playing Vigil the Longest Night after, I think we mentioned it on sale last week. But I'm going to mention it again because I think it's really good and worth that price. It's 40% off at the moment and it's a really nice Metroidvania that they went back and worked on quite extensively after it launched. Like it was, I'm not going to lie, it was a mess. When I first went to review this, uh, I got to the first, the gatekeeper at the start of the first town and he had no head. And I was like, oh bro, come on. And then I restarted and the boss had like no body. I was like, no, nobody needs this. Ouch. Although there are only four different weapon types, but it mixes, or supposedly mixes, Lovecraftian and Taiwanese culture. Now, I know nothing of Taiwanese culture, so I'm not going to attest to, but man, there's a lot of Lovecraftian on Switch, so I can certainly uh, vouch for that side. What is nice to see, and something I just really enjoy, is multiple endings. There are multiple endings to, to find, as if any of us ever do most of them, right? We, we finish the games and we're like... <laughs> 
I, we just don't do it. Oh, well, I'm speaking for myself. I don't tend to go back and play through again. You're all going to say, yeah, we do. We, we finish every ending now. <laughs> it's just me then. But yeah, that one's worth it. Hidden gem time. And what a great hidden gem it is. You're going to be like, what on earth is that? It's Bubba is you. It's 30% off at the moment. And it's an incredible. Don't be put off by the word puzzle, but it is a puzzle game. But it's like no puzzle game you've ever played before. Essentially, it uses coding principles. So you, you're creating, this doesn't sound fun at all, does it? But you're creating codes and changing the rules of the world to solve the puzzles. Probably the worst description anyone's ever given of a game. But that is it in a nutshell. You can see these little pieces of text. They're essentially um, snippets of code that you have to use in certain ways to solve problems. So there, on one of them, it'll be like, the key is open, which makes sense. You get the key, it will open a door. But then there might be another instruction that says, wall is stop. But then you can switch that, so it's wall is open, and you get the picture, you're gradually solving things. It's ingenious and a brilliant game and well worth you picking up. This one's on sale until April the 10th at 30% off. Let us all gather together on the shores of a void beach and stare out at the hideous avoids as they sail away into the void. I shall fire an arrow and we shall ignite them, raise our cups and drink to their destruction. The first of them is Rico London. Now, Glenn reviewed this for us, and I've got to be honest, it was a farce. It's absolutely farcical. I hate to say it about a game that's been worked on, and it's been worked on by a reasonable team. And, and I liked the first one. I thought it had its charms, but Rico London is appalling. They stripped out everything that was good. They stuck you on rails. It's just terrible, and it was so janky at launch as well. You'll have to let me know if it's been patched up, but... Even so, the whole structure of the game wasn't enjoyable. We ended up in hysterical laughter, really. It was such a mess. Um, feel free to go check out his review of that one. You might disagree with me. You might see it and go, wow, that is next level masterpiece. Throw Elden Ring away. I'm going to play Rico London. <laughs> I doubt it. The other one is Dynasty Warriors 9 Empires. Now the performance is so bad. Like it's, it, in my opinion it is. You know, I, I do look out for, for frame rates and things like that. And I think the performance is so bad. In the open world, it's like the open world is completely unused. But it's performance is shocking. You've got frame drops all of the time. The visual quality compared to other ver versions obviously takes a big hit. Um... It's weird because I actually really like the game, but I can't recommend you pick it up until it receives the patches it needs for it to be worth, well, even on reduced, it's 50 odd dollars. So yeah, I just say this is not really an avoid the game. I liked the game, but do avoid that price and do avoid the current performance. So that's it for this week. Save 10% using our code SWITCHUP over at switchup.gg. Thanks so much. I need to go and watch my kids who have prepared a show in the garden. If you heard any like kids laughing and screaming in the background, well, GG to them is all I can and say they're having a good time for all things switch oh and thanks to our patrons you guys are amazing and to anyone that watches and leaves comments for all things switch all the time keep it switch up cheers guys see ya